Welcome back. Saturday will mark 44 years since Mount St. Helens erupted. And since then, our state has made big strides in tracking volcanic activity in Washington. Meteorologist Abby Oconee joins us with more on the very latest efforts there. Good morning, Abby. Hey, good morning, Erin. So scientists are doing ongoing active work to install new equipment on volcanoes across the Cascades. And to talk more about this, we want to bring in Dr. Harold Tobin, the director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Harold, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, good morning, Abby. So, Harold, we're talking about monitoring stations on our state's volcanoes. It can help detect seismic activity. So what is the equipment, how does it work, and then how much advance notice can it give us ahead of an eruption? Yeah, one of the things we know from when Mount St. Helens erupted back in 1980 and lots of volcanoes around the world is they typically become, you know, seismically active. Earthquakes start happening and increasing numbers of earthquakes happen as magma is moving and an eruption is potentially underway. Mount St. Helens started, you know, in March and the eruption happened on May 18th back in 1980. So that gave a lot of time for that sort of uh, potential advance warning. So we monitor mostly with seismometers for earthquakes and that's what the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at UW does really in close collaboration with our partners at the U.S. Geological Survey down in Vancouver, Washington at the Cascade Volcano Observatory. Good to identify all the partners and yeah. it's really incredible to think about all the advancements, improvements and progress since Mount, uh, Mount St. Helens eruption 44 years ago. We'll get to Mount Rainier in a moment, but tell me about the updates on monitoring stations at Glacier Peak and Mount Baker. Yeah. yeah, you know, we have five volcanoes in Washington State and the ones that um, uh, are really under monitored from our perspective that need more instrumentation to make sure we really understand kind of what's going on and put a put a stethoscope on those volcanoes are Mount Baker and Glacier Peak and so um, uh, they're both in remote spots they're both you know wilderness areas hard to get to um, Glacier Peak has one seismometer on it and that's it and it's a very old one that is really in need of uh, uh, of proper upgrade and replacement so we're planning to go out and do that this summer um, and then actually following up not this year but coming soon the US Geological Survey is planning to put some larger number of instruments eight to ten new seismometers ultimately um, uh, around uh, uh, around the mountain area and you're saying that there's a, like a lot of challenge in doing this type of work because it requires a lot of funding and then permission and permitting to do so let's talk about Mount Rainier this is a very dangerous volcano so how will new stations make a difference over there yeah Mount Rainier we do monitor quite well because it is seismically active. In fact, it's had a small swarm of earthquakes, something very normal for it um, uh, in the past few days. Um, so it has instrumentation on it, but that a lot of those instruments are high on the mountain. You know, climbers know that Camp Muir and Camp Sherman up on the glaciers are the way you get towards the peak of Mount Rainier. We actually have seismic stations at both of those remote sites that require backpacking in uh, to get to. And they, they need maintenance, they need monitor uh, 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 upgrades. And so we're doing work at both of those stations this summer to try to improve them. We've got to basically continuously keep this network uh, up to date and working well so that we know what's going on in the mountain. That's right. Well, thanks so much for talking to us. Um, you and I have chatted in, in years prior mm -hmm. about how volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest are severely under monitored. Is that still the case? And how good of equipment are we at right now? Well, it's really variable depending on the volcano. We know that Mount St. Helens is the most likely one to have a future eruption based on its past history and its activity. So we've got a lot of stations, you know, something like more than 20 certainly are in and around Mount St. Helens. Same kind of goes for Mount Rainier. But some of these other volcanoes, Mount Adams, Glacier Peak, and Mount Baker, really are, um, from my perspective, very much under monitored. And uh, we'd like to do more, of course, but we have two things, you know, that we're working with. One is just the, the access is difficult. They are in wilderness areas. We can't always use um, machinery like helicopters to get to them. And the second is funding. It costs a lot of money to do this work. Um, federal government has not been able to be forthcoming with um, the requested funding for volcano monitoring in this country in recent years. And so we're trying to, to you know, promote getting that funding up to snuff so we can do this well. Well, um, Dr. Harold Tobin, Director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, thanks so much for joining us this morning and talk about these very important issues. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. All right, well, we're going to be bringing you more coverage on this very topic coming up at 8 and 9. But in the meantime, I want to send things over to Chief Meteorologist Brian McMillan with some sunshine in store today. It's such interesting stuff. And, you know, a lot of people that watch our show lived through that. And, and it's a, a very vivid memory for them. 44 years ago this Saturday, uh, Mount St. Helens erupted. Uh, 57 people were killed. Uh, 1,300 feet of the mountain blew off. And volcanic ash surged 80,000 feet up into the atmosphere. And ash could be 
is seen thousands of miles away as it finally fell. Uh, a remarkable event here in the Pacific Northwest. And here's another one of our vol volcanoes. That's, of course, Mount Rainier, 53 degrees, sleeping giant. A beautiful mountain for sure.